right, what's up? We are back with Behind the Bikini, episode number 29. We've almost made it to 30. We've been very, very good about this. I'm proud of us. Yeah, um, once a week for 30 weeks almost. I know, that's crazy. When you start thinking about how, how fast the time goes, man. I know we talk about this all the time, but it's just crazy. Like, yeah, we started it in the summer, and now we're getting into the spring. So, <laughs> yeah. And we're almost and, at our next Olympia. I know, like, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know. It'll be here before you know it. It's crazy. It'll be here before we know it, exactly. Ugh. So, um, before we forget, like, subscribe, comment, um, all the hit all the bells, all the buttons, wherever they are. <laughs> that helps with all of it. Um, so, today's topic, we're going to keep going with our little mini, mini series on macros. Um, and we're going to talk about macro splits, what they look like. Um, what you should be focusing on versus what your goal is, um, kind of give you some examples. We had a lot of girls that wrote in and gave us their their particular macro splits right now. And um, our goal here is not to say if your macro split is right or wrong, uh, but we're just going to show them so you get an idea of what they look like um, and give you our thoughts as potentially why they're doing it this way. Um, you know, maybe we have, we have clients that are doing something similar, that kind of thing. I'll show you mine and we're going to pull up um, we're going to pull up my, my fitness pal. And we're going to build meals today. Um, so that's going to be something fun too. Uh, and we'll show that and just show how you do it and how it might be put together, all of those kinds of fun things. So, um, before we get into all that though, how are you doing? So good. <laughs> how are you? I'm all off, off, all off everything. Time change. <laughs> The time change, I'm telling you, like it has messed me up so much. And the reason why you want to know why is because you guys didn't change. <laughs> my, uh, all of us over here in Arizona. Yeah, you guys, you guys, you guys, guys didn't change. So like I've got all my appointments set, you know, so I have like, we have our coaching calls, you know, the two, the two every week and now they're an hour later. So it's throwing me off, off of everything. Is it mm. just Phoenix that doesn't, that doesn't um, change? Correct. Yep. Just Arizona. Jeez Louise, y'all got it. Yeah. You got you actually you guys are ahead of the schedule. <laughs> are you ahead of the curve? The rest of us should not be doing this. I wish we could just spring forward and stay there. Uh, I know. It's so stupid. I mean, at this really point, like is. Florida, when I talked to my staff, it was two hours in front of us. Now it's three hours. Now so three. I get it. I feel it. Like yeah. you know, it, it's it is weird that we still have daylight savings time. I don't I don't get it. <laughs> I don't I mean the whole reason why they did it in the first place was for farmers. Right. So get well, that. the farmers can wake up whenever they need to. The rest <laughs> That's of the world right. doesn't I'm like the, the rest of us though there's a lot of us that are not farmers. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, no. A lot of people aren't farmers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, the, the thing is, is like, because I, you know, because I work from home and I run my own business and stuff like that, I can make my schedule how I need it to work. So that's not a big deal, but I'm literally staying up an hour later and I'm getting up an hour later. I'm like, my, my body is still on that time. It doesn't yeah. know the clock's changed, you know? Mm -hmm. So like this morning I wake up at freaking almost 9am and I'm like, this is really, really late. <laughs> and then like, cause my body still thinks it's eight. You know, right. and I typically, typically prior to the time change, we get up between 7.30 and 8. That was my time frame. So now, not only that, I feel like everything is behind the whole day. Like the whole day, I feel like I'm playing catch up and I hate An that. hour behind. Yeah. 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 I, I had like a lot I'm of girls check in this week and they're like, I don't know which way is up. I'm so tired. Everybody with yes. this type of time change where we lose an hour. Yeah. Um, everybody is like, ah, yeah. <laughs> especially for the people that have to like go clock into a job, not make their yeah. own schedule. Like, that's Yeah. Uh, Hard no, I even said it on my check-in this morning, like right before we got on here, I did my check-in for Jamie and I was like, I'm like, my sleep is all over the place. I was like, I was exhausted over the week, like into the first half of the week. Absolutely, Absolutely. exhausted. Um, and I was like, I know it's, it's partly because I'm training really hard and all those kinds of things too. That's all part of it. I get that. But it's also just the time. Like there, I had to take naps. I was like, I don't take naps. <laughs> I was like, I don't do that. <laughs> that's, hey, I'll yeah. do it in prep. I don't do it when I'm in off season. Like that's not something I do in off season. So yeah. as coaches, when we're scheduling all of our calls, it's always such a game of like, what time zone are you in? Where am I? Where are you? Yeah. So I have this cool app now where I can put in like all of the time zones and I can just look on the app and see, you sent that to me yesterday when yep. we were trying to figure out our time. Yep. Uh, but it's, <laughs> oh, it is, it's like, oh, it's like a circus it's going just, on in your brain. <laughs> I mean, it's, just, like, it's just the one, it's just the one hour, but it makes such a huge difference. And, yeah. um, you know, I was saying this on, again on our coaching call this week, there's a, there's a study done where heart attacks go up 24% on daylight savings time that weekend um, because of the interruption in the circadian rhythm. Yeah. That's, that's how I can see people waking up and be like, 
you know, yeah. and they feel off or they feel late. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I could totally. Yeah, that's that. how much sleep and your quality of sleep makes a difference. It makes oh, a I want to check my sleep difference. score. Sorry, I've been having a, a streak. Let's see. Oh, I didn't check mine this morning either. I need to do that. It was bad. <laughs> I mean, it's 92, but I've been getting hundreds, so. That's really good. I should show you mine. You're oh geez, hold on. Mine's different because it's on it's um it's Apple. It's their sleep their sleep app. So mine is Do you very, wear your watch to bed or what do you yes. wear? Okay. Yeah. I we have yeah. a sleep aid on our bed. We love it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you mentioned that. Did you get the aura ring? You mentioned you were gonna get the aura ring. Did you get No, that? I keep going back and forth because the yeah. sleep aid does a little bit more. I, I would like it, I think, just to take my watch off sometimes because I am getting a little bit of like inundated like everything buzzing on my wrists all the time is getting a little much i'm just so busy right now with work and everybody's texting me and, and i'm like eh. well, set, it to, set it to a work a work setting i have a work That's... setting on my on my watch and i have a sleep setting too how so do you like, change think... the settings so you go into your actual phone oh and... it's like the do not disturb but you have yeah, like you the can work. create one yeah thank you yeah. Great, so great when tip. i have yeah yeah when i have my work one on all that i get notified about are emails That's it. So I need everything else gets silenced. So yeah, Thank you. It's, it's, yeah, it's very helpful. I will do that today. I'm going to rate that on my to-do list <laughs> because it is a thing for me. Yeah. And then the, the sleep app here on, on the, the iPhone, it doesn't work unless you're in sleep mode on your, on your watch. Oh, you have to tell it. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't so, sleep with my watch. Yeah. My scores aren't always great because sometimes I'll like, I'll fall asleep on the, on the couch and I forget to put it into sleep mode or something like that. So if you don't do it, it doesn't calculate that. But Got it. regardless, my sleep scores for this week have been awful. Absolutely Why? awful. Like, well, from the time again, I've been so else. off. Yeah. Okay. Because I've been so off. And the other thing about it too, is that it takes into account when you typically go to sleep and Routine. when you typically go up, get up. So according to my phone, I'm off by at least an hour every single day on all of this stuff. Right. So it's going to take, it's going to take uh, you probably a few weeks. And we're going to say another couple weeks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So my sleep scores are awful right now. So Jamie, just so you know, <laughs> sorry, sorry, coach. Sorry, coach. Because in reality, when I look at the daily, the daily sleep, like last night, I, I got seven and a half hours. The night before I got eight and a half hours. The night before that, this one's got to be wrong. I must've not, this one's saying nine hours. I don't think I got nine hours. Is that right? You think it's too much or too less? Too much. Yeah. No, that was Monday. No, that was Monday. That was the day that I stayed in bed because I was exhausted. That was the exactly. day I stayed in bed. That makes so, sense. So yeah, that's almost nine hours. Almost nine hours. But anyway, my sleep app is like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> it's like whatever you're doing, stop doing it. Yeah, don't do that anymore. <laughs> so change you know. it. Change it. <laughs> I feel, and actually last night I felt like I got really good sleep. So I'm gonna have to look at that again and see where it actually started logging in my sleep. I think it started, cause I didn't go to bed till late. I went to bed around one. Something. Ooh. Yeah. Holy right? moly. 10, yeah. 11, that's 10 AM, 10 PM my time. I was asleep last night at that time. We yeah. passed out really last night. But I didn't get up until nine. Again, I didn't get up till nine. So I was rushing to get the, to get to here because Thursday mornings are my, I get up, I do my, my check-ins for Jamie and I have to get everything ready for the day and everything too. And then this, so that's why when I contacted you about, about timing for this, I was like, I could still do 1030, but I'm, I'm really yeah. a little yeah. later. <laughs> it worked out perfect because today I'm oh, going to, to be on Jamie's podcast. It was yeah. literally as soon as we're done here, we have to drive over to the studio. So this worked out perfectly. Yeah. 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 No, absolutely. And so, so um, that's actually one thing that, that, so it's a good thing and a bad thing. So those uh, training calls that Drew's been doing on Wednesdays, again, they're screwing up my schedule and everything too, but I'm watching them. Like I'm on Google meet because I'm, I've actually got them on while I'm in, in the gym because I'm trying to get my training in. <laughs> so <you> <laughs> so then yesterday, you know, all the mobility stuff that he was going through and everything, I was actually doing all of that stuff in the gym at the time. <laughs> going through that so I was like this is perfect I was like I I'm kind of already okay. taught at that point <laughs> I know I was like oh I forgot about this part or I forgot about that part or whatever so um so that was actually very helpful I was like I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit like you know again a little distracted because I'm watching my phone while I'm in the gym but it's also helping me at the same time so um so the one thing <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? Um, the one thing that that uh, going through was the hip hinge squats and stuff like that. I'm actually really glad that uh, you guys all went through that yesterday because yeah. I was doing those yesterday. 
And, there you go. Um, and it's I a tough like, movement. It's one that it, I constantly have to keep refilming. And that's what Drew and I keep telling our clients. Like they keep every three weeks, they'll be like, I'm, I'm feeling it in my back. And I'm like, refilm yourself. Like I constantly have to refilm that hinge to squat all the time because yeah. it is a movement that's very, very hard. And you have yeah. to keep looking at your form. And every time I film myself, I'm like, oop, I'm not doing that right. I'm not doing that right. I'm not doing that right. So it's one that you have to keep really light and one that you have yeah. to keep looking at. <laughs> well, that's what I said too. I was like, so yesterday I wanted to push myself heavier. So I did. And um, I didn't feel it in my back. I didn't feel it in my back, but I didn't feel it in my upper outer glute either. So then he was talking about the whole um, hamstring tie-in area. That's where I felt it yesterday. So just okay. when I upped the weight, it went into a different part of my legs. Mm. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So, which isn't necessarily what I want, but it, I felt the difference. And when he, when he was explaining that on the call, I was like, oh, that makes sense. You know what right. I mean? So. I was because I'm, I'm very, very conscious of my back. I know that like I, that's for me specifically, my waistline is something I have to be careful of. So I know if I'm going into my back, I'm doing something wrong. But I was like, well, this is going into like my hamstrings. Is it supposed to be here? <laughs> I was like, is this right or is this wrong? You know what I mean? So yeah. actually going through that yesterday, I was like, oh, okay. So I'm going to lighten the weight for next time because I want to get back into my upper outer glute. But at least I understood why it was it was hitting where it was hitting. You know what Absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, those calls have been super awesome. And I'm really appreciative that he's doing them. Obviously, him and I, you know, work together a lot. So I yeah. hear and you know he's been training me forever but like always to hear him deeper educate us and you know he's brilliant so to get into his brain a little bit more I always learn something so yeah. it's been so cool to see you know what we're going what we have going on behind the scenes as fit body fusion coaches and the education and I think we're all coming out really strong this year and we all put a lot of time and effort into our own education and personal development this off season all together. And it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's really cool. I'm really excited for our athletes this year. I feel like they're just going to see another level of coaching from us. Mm -hmm. And that's really at the end of the day, what all of us want, right? We all want our athletes to have a great experience and we're all taking the time to make sure that we all do that as a group. Absolutely. And that too, like that, like I've said before, you know, one of the reasons why I, I always hesitated on becoming a coach is I realized once you cross that that threshold, you're now taking people's health and their longevity into your hands. You know what I yeah. mean? And and I want to make sure that I'm doing it to the best of my ability. And, you know, so, so like I said, even though the only time that I had to get on that call yesterday was when I was actually in the gym, I still got on it. You know what I mean? Because it helped me at the end right. of the day. It's going to help my clients. It's going to help me be a better co a coach all the way around. You know what I mean? And like I said, just even if you just pick up little nuggets, like I just picked up those little nuggets about the hip, hip hinge. I'm like, oh, okay, everything makes sense now, you know? I tell people that all the time, like when we have like these, these NPC workshops, the free ones that are, you know, wherever you are, because we have them all over the country now, go. It doesn't matter how long you've been competing because you could pick up just a little nugget that makes everything click. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, that makes so much more sense now. Right. Absolutely. Like, and it's just, it's, you can never stop learning. Like you can always learn more. Right. Yeah. And just ha having that student mentality is huge. So yeah. Growth um, mindset. <laughs> yep. Always, always. And I, you know, I think people tend to get comfortable sometimes and I think they're just like, well, this worked before, so it's going to work again. No, not necessarily. You know, yeah. you, you got to be open to all of that. So, um, which again comes into kind of our, our topic for today, which is the, the macros. Um, so let me pull up that last slide that we didn't get into yesterday. So we're going to start talking a little bit about, um, about the macro splits and what, what a macro split looks like, what a macro split even is, right? Because some people don't know what, what we're talking about when we say something like that. So um, there's that. If I show this, it's not going to block us. Yeah, that's not, I'm going to hide that for right now because it's too much screen. There we go. All right. So what is an ideal macro split? So every person's going to be different, but why is the split important and where should you start? So what we see here is the 20 to 30% fat, 30% pro protein, and 40 to 50% carbs. That's a basic, simple macro split, right? Um, anything that you would add to this, this is a place to start. This is when you're looking at your, your calories for the day and you split them up. This is how much you're going to eat this much protein, this much fat, this much carbs inside of that caloric breakdown right there, inside of that that amount of, of calories that you have. Yes. And, and then if you're just trying, you know, if you're brand new to macros, you're, you don't even track macros. You just want to kind of start intuitively eating or cleaning up your diet. 
a really good place to start is to start with one thing versus the entire split. And the one mm-hmm. thing I would suggest is your protein. Just start taking a yes. look at your protein and tracking your protein intake. Um, a really good way to do that is one gram per one pound of body weight. So if you weigh mm-hmm. 120 pounds and try to get in 120 grams of protein per day. Um, and then from there, once you start hitting that goal, you know, 120 grams every day for maybe a couple weeks, then you could start looking at like the fats and the carbs and things like that and trying to find the appropriate amount that works best for you. Um, Mm -hmm. So you could do, you know, the math of, you know, the 120 grams of protein, how much percent of that, and then trying to find the carbs and the fats allotted. And then we go back into, you know, how are you training and what kind of energy systems are you using? And that's where it kind of gets into that, that deeper knowledge and that deeper education of of an appropriate macro split, macro split, excuse me. Um, But if you're new to this, you know, starting with small, simple goals is going to be best so that you're not too overwhelmed at first. And then, you know, once you kind of tackle that goal, then add on the next one and then try to get that one and then add them on the next one. Yes. Um, and I always say too, like the easiest way to start with the protein aspect is do anywhere from like four to six ounces of protein per meal that you eat. And that's going to be approximately where you need to be. Right. Yep. And get yourself a little digital scale. If you want to get super, uh, Super micro with it, <laughs> but you can also just use the fist method too. If you got a, uh, you know, piece of chicken that's the size of your fist, that's about a serving size, right? Correct. Um, so you know, the, the best thing that you can do is start there, um, and then build from there as well. So we're going to go into a few examples of macro splits too. But where would you? So let's say we've got the the protein there, we've got that in there. Now, where would you go get your carbs from? What would be the? Where would you start putting adding carbs in? For a client, I would look at what the goal is and then what they're currently intaking. So anytime I start with a client, they do a three-day food log for me and they kind of show me about how many calories they're currently consuming and what macros are making up those calories. And most of the time what I do when I start with a client is I'll set their protein goal first based off of their goal. So whether it's, you know, 0.8 to 1.25 of body weight, depending on, again, what, what, what their goal is. And then from there, I'll kind of flip the, the fats and the carbs to hit the same amount of calories that they've been consuming just within their appropriate um, goal and intake. Um, so most of the time I'm doing about point, uh, 30 to 40% of body weight and fats uh, for bodybuilding athletes because we need a good amount of fats to help with like hormone support and general health and things like that, but we don't necessarily use fats as our primary energy source in bodybuilding, then the rest of it all a lot to carbs. Mm-hmm. Um, and then from there, we just kind of, you know, check and see, you know, we'll go through the first week of that, see how they're reacting. Some people feel like they're not getting enough energy. So then I know that I need to up their carbs. Some people feel like they're too full. They're too, they're too bogged down. Then I know I need to maybe drop their protein a little bit, especially for people that are newer to tracking higher amounts of protein. It's going to make them feel more fuller, more, more, more satiated, more satisfied. And it's going to be harder at first to get that amount of protein in. So I kind of start with that and then kind of adjust and see from there based on their biofeedback and kind of what they're telling me how they're feeling. Yep. I agree with that. Um, and there's always going to be case specific kind of things too. There's things that you have to, that you have to look at. Like, um, I'll use a good example of somebody that I just brought on this week. That's going to be competing in a couple of months. Her, her coach prior to, she just wasn't seeing the results she thought she should be seeing that kind of thing. So when I got all of her information, she was on high fat, low carb. Um, and when I looked at her photos, you could tell that she was just being depleted really hard, right? She's just being starved more than anything else. So in her scenario, it's like, we got to, we pretty much got to flip your, your carbs and fats, you know, your, you, your skin's hanging, all those kinds of things. We need to fill you back out. You know what I mean? So, you know, in that scenario, normally I would go and I would say, okay, we're going to go little, little by little, like you just said, we're going to adjust things little by little, but in her scenario, she already signed up for a show in two months. We got to make some drastic changes right away. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. We got We got to do what we got to do. I said, and now once we, once you get consistent on a little bit higher on the carb end and lower on the fat end this, this week, then we can look at what you look like, where you, it looks like if you're filling your muscle back out a little bit, you know, and then we can go from there. We can decide if we need to tweak it some more, you know what I mean? But so yeah. there's always going to be, there's always going to be scenarios. And, um, you know, we, we talk about this all the time. We want to focus on health first. So when you start looking at people that have these macros where like their, their fats are way too low or whatever, like we, we've got to get them into a healthy spot first. 
um, yeah. and make them look healthier, make them feel healthier. You know, she was complaining about the fact she's like, I've never been a tired person. She's like, but I'm struggling to even get out of bed in the morning. I said, it's because your macros are wrong. First of all, they're wrong for what you're doing. I said, and second of all, you're killing yourself in the freaking gym and you're killing yourself in the, in cardio. And I'm killing myself because my husband just brought me coffee. <laughs> Yay. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. <laughs> um, but anyway, <laughs> um, so sometimes you do have to make some pretty significant changes right away, but I'm just like you when it comes to when a, when a client first comes to me, I want to see what they've first been doing and then we can kind of adjust it from there. We want to make small adjustments so that it isn't a, a huge shock on their body um, and that we can get them into an optimal place for them and what's going to work best for them versus this is what your macro split should be right here in order to gain muscle or this is what your macro split should be right here in order to, get, to lose fat. It doesn't work like that. Everybody's going to be a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah. And most of the time when people are coming to me, not from another coach or, you know, for the first time, they're hiring a coach for the first time. The majority of the people, when they are giving me that three to five day food log, they're over consuming on fats. Mm -hmm. uh, they have about moderate carb and they're super low on their protein intake, wow. which is, you know, again, what's the goal? You know, for some people that could be an ideal split, but for mm -hmm. most it's not. Yeah. Um, high, high fats tend to um, make what your client said, she felt bogged down, she felt overly full, she felt kind of brain foggy. If you're not utilizing the carbohydrates, or I'm sorry, the fats, and that's what people tend to start reporting is that they just yep. kind of feel like, um, so, and, and another point too, is that if you notice, Sean and I both asked for information up front from our clients before we make any changes, which, mm -hmm. you know, it's a red flag for other coaches. Like if you're hiring a coach and they just don't really ask you these things or don't look at like a three day, five day food log of what you're currently consuming and they're just delivering something to you, it's more than likely like a cookie cutter plan, right? They're right. not asking yes. those deeper questions of what you're currently doing. They're just like, here, this kind of will work for you and your body type. So right. it really is an, it's a pan, it, it, it depends statement, but this is just general recommendations of what we're seeing and things like that. Right. And that's, that's a big thing too, because every single person that I've signed on as a client so far has been like, okay, let's go. I was like, but, but wait, I got to see where you are first. I was like, I'm not just going to give you something just to say I'm giving it to you. Right. We, we got to figure out we got it's not just your food. It's what you're tr what you're doing in the gym and things like that, too. You know, I have clients that that are cardio bunnies. You know what I mean? I'm like, we got to We got to pull that down. I said, but I'm not going to pull it down right now because that's going to completely freak out your whole body. I said, I want you pulling it back slowly so you can keep doing your cardio. You got to keep you mentally happy, too, because for some of them, that's what they love. You know what I mean? So but let's 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 back the intensity down a little bit or let's back the time down a little bit or something. And again, it's just little adjustments. Again, going back to your macros, little adjustments on the macros. And you'd be shocked, like people would be shocked to that how much progress you can see just by teeny tiny little tweaks like that. Just oh, one little one little cog in the wheel. And then all of a sudden, boom, everything's working perfectly again. You yeah. know? I get clients all the time where I do the example that I just you know shared with you guys, three to five days, cool. They're eating, you know, mostly fats, moderate carb. Uh, low protein, I'll take the same exact amount of calories and just give them a higher protein diet, lower fat and moderate carb. And they tighten up like that. And they're yep. like, what just happened? We didn't change yeah. anything. Like I'm just eating more protein. I'm actually, they actually feel like they're eating more food because of the higher amount of protein and they're dropping weight and they're gaining muscle. Mm -hmm. Like this, this, this is the example of it's, you just weren't eating the nutrients that your body is right. fueling with right now. And now we figured that out and now you're thriving. Yeah. Um, so there, there's, there's cases all the time where I start working with someone in the first three to six weeks, that's literally the one adjustment that I make and their body just continue to respond with no other changes. Yep. Mm -hmm. so. so what we're going to do now is I have a few, um, a handful of these were sent in to me as far as what their macro splits were. So we're just going to take a look at them. And before we pull them up, I just, we're just going to put the disclaimer out there that we're not telling you that your macro split is wrong. We're not telling you that it's right. There. We're telling, we're just giving, and these are some ideas. I want you guys that are watching and listening to see what a, what a macro split could look like. Um, and according to their goals, you know, who they are, their height, weight, age, all those kinds of things, um, what, the, you know, what they want to accomplish. But again, this is generalized information because as we just said, we get all of this information from our clients up front before we adjust anything. And we don't have enough information on these particular people to know if we could adjust anything, right? So we're just showing you what they're doing so you get an, can get an idea of what a typical macro, ma uh, macro split could look like. 
doesn't necessarily mean you should be doing it. Doesn't necessarily mean they should be doing it. This is just general. Okay. So I just want to put that disclaimer out there. <laughs> we're not saying anybody saying anybody's right or anybody's wrong. This is just what we're looking at. So um, here's one. Okay. So this one is uh, came in. She's doing so protein, 130 grams of carbs and 50 grams of fat, and she's five foot eight, 35. Um, she's her goals are she wants to lose body fat, possibly gain a little bit of muscle, but I feel like I've gained some this year, so I'd be happy getting my body fat down to see what it's actually what is actually there too. So when I read this, what this tells me is she's trying to kind of lean up a little bit in doing this. Um, she doesn't necessarily want to gain, but she doesn't want to lose weight either. She's trying to lose body fat. So, you know, looking at this, what are your initial thoughts when you're looking at her particular split with the protein? Uh, she didn't answer the weight question. That would have really right. helped us out a lot. But yeah. so she's at 140 mm -hmm. protein, 130 carb, 50 fat. Um, again, if I would have had a weight, I would have been able to give a better description. But I would say if she's trying to lose body fat and gain a little bit of muscle, she probably should drop the fats a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And again, it's really hard to lose body fat and gain muscle at the same time. Right. So it's really of what she currently looks like and which which goal are we trying to attack first, right? Like, are we trying to, maybe we need to go into a little bit of a deficit and lose a little bit of body fat and then kind of use that rebound to start building muscle again. Maybe we try to go into a little bit of a recomp phase, which is where the scale is not going to move a lot, but she can drop some body fat and gain some some muscle, but it just kind of depends on her training history and where she's currently at with cardio and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but with her height and her age, it, it, it looks pretty good. She's eating a good amount of yeah. protein, moderate carb. Like I said, the fats may be a little bit high, um, but I would know that for sure if, if we had a body weight. Yeah. And I agree. Like, you know, cause she's five, eight, so she's just a little shorter than me. She's trying to put on some muscle. She might, and I think we don't know the weight, so she might want to put on a little bit more protein onto that that macro yep. split there, because yep. Um, yep. I would I would guess she's probably somewhere in the one forty to one fifty range as far as how much she weighs at that at that height. Again, I could be eight. completely wrong. Yeah, I could be completely wrong. She'd be lower. She'd be higher. I don't know. I'm you know I'm yeah. five nine. I'm I'm one fifty four right now. So you know everybody's everybody's a little bit different. Um, but. You, again, if you're trying to add a little bit of muscle, you probably want a little bit more protein than what you actually weigh, like we were talking about before. So Correct. it's just for, for round numbers, if you're saying you're 140 pounds, you might want to go up to 150 or 160 50. carbs. Yeah, some, or not carbs, sorry, protein, you know, so just so that you're taking in enough protein to, to maintain that muscle mass and to grow a little bit more. Um, Absolutely. And I would say, you know, and again, this is all, again, this is all person dependent. This is all dependent on what you're um, how you react to different things and stuff like that, but you could probably work on adding a little bit more carbs, but she's also trying to lose body fat. So, you know, it, it could, she could be right where she needs to be is, is the basic thing that we're just saying right now. Um, but the one thing that looked that again, looking at her, her height, I would say maybe a little bit more protein. So, yep. So yep. there's that one. Get rid of that. Okay, so this one is she's on 2,055 calories, which is 250 grams of carbs, 55 grams of fat, 140 grams of protein, and she's got a thousand calorie flex for the week. Um, she's around, she got these macros when she was around 125 pounds. She said, I've been off, so now that I'm sitting comfortably at 136 pounds, the plan was to get the macros even higher and grow the glutes and shoulders. Height is five foot five. And no major goal right now. Sit back, build, pose, live, and come back with a healthy mindset. So thoughts on this. And also, what's a 1,000 calorie flex? What does that mean? Yeah, so I, I like this macro split for her current goals and things like that, especially when she says she's in here and feels good. Now, mm -hmm. the question would be, is she building? Is she growing? Or is she yeah. maintaining, right? So if her goal is to continue to build, then maybe the macros need to be raised. But it it depends, right? We don't, we don't mm -hmm. necessarily have that information. Mm -hmm. Um, so a, a thousand calorie flex meal is basically like a free meal. 
but it's tracked. Um, yep. So the the coach will tell you the amount of calories that they want you to consume for your free meal. And you could do it on a one day period or you can split it up between five days um, or five to, sorry, five to seven days. So what that means is you can take those calories and, uh, and eat a thousand calories over than your allotted macro calories for the week, but you can choose how to split up the macros, meaning yes. it can come, um, never, nobody would ever do this, but a thousand of that fl those flex calories could come from all protein if you want to, or mostly fats and a little protein if you want to. Um, and then we kind of see how the body and the athlete responds. Um, for most people, they'll do this on a one night, like they'll go and have, you know, date night with their husband or with their family and they'll, you know, They'll program what they think they're going to be eating within their macros and getting pretty close to that to that calorie target. Some people like to have a little bit of flexibility during all days of the week. So they'll, you know, take a thousand divided by seven and then they'll put that extra calorie tacked on each day of the week. So it gives that client in the off season some flexibility to have some free or free or, you know, untracked, but it's tracked meals, um, but keep it roped in so that it's yeah. it's controlled. Yep. And this for me, just as using myself as an example, when I came off of contest prep last year, I went into a, you know, have a, have a free meal once a week. And then once we felt like we'd done that enough, <laughs> it we reined it into the 500 calorie flex where you can have those calories and go out and have a date night and eat, eat over 500 calories over my, over my plan, which was, which was helpful as far as when I was going through that time frame of reverse dieting and trying to control my hunger and all those kinds of things, you know, the, the cravings and all the, the things that we, that we have issues with coming out of shows. So that flex really helps. Um, and to me, when I read this little insert that she put in here too, it sounds like, you know, she went from 125 pounds to 136. So it sounds like to me, she had some issues with kind of staying on track at first and now she's feeling good. So, you know, having that thousand calorie flex in there for her mentally keeps her in the game. You know what I mean? So then that way yeah. she knows that even if she goes way off or whatever, she's not really way off because it's programmed in her plan, you know? Right. Yeah. And so, I think that's important in the off season, you know, as a coach to talk about to your client about what they need in the off season for that mental right. reset. You know, some clients right. need, need a complete, you know, intuitive eating day off plan. And then as a coach, you know, that you keep the, the macros a little bit conservative during the week, knowing that that mm -hmm. one day they're probably or consume. Some like to track macros for a free meal. They like to know that they're still on plan, but they have a little bit more freedom and flexibility to choose the foods that they want. This is where the flex meal is really good. Or someone that just, you know, really needs that untracked meal, but they have trouble doing it themselves and roping themselves and it gives them a guideline. Um, yes. So it's really important, you know, the, the off season is just about, about the body getting a break and building and things like that, but also that mental reset. And that's where mm -hmm. Knowing your athlete, knowing your client and what works best for them is crucial so that you can choose a plan that's going to work best for them so that they're not gaining a ton of body fat. They don't feel restricted in their off season so that they're binging or eating food off plan and then gaining weight. And you're not sure why. Um, so yeah. that's where that, that big communication comes in that we talk about all the time. That's right. You know, and again, going back to it, this can change over time. You know, that's why you have this relationship and this communication with your coach, because that was something, the flex meal is something that I needed last year coming out of my shows. But this year, I'm just like, no, like even when I have my cheat meals or my, I don't like to call them cheat meals. That's just a, that's a bad vernacular, you guys, by the way. <laughs> cheat meals, a track meal. Cheat meals, free meals. Cheat meals is, for me is a trigger word. So it's like free meal. It is for most people. Meal. Yeah. So um, free meal. Um, now, this this past season coming off season, my free meals have all been, you know, within, I don't need to track it. You know, I don't feel like I need to go way overboard. You know, I came, like I said, I've come from the, the world of binge restrict, binge restrict kind of dieting prior to getting on macros. So it's a, it's a mental adjustment as you go along and it's going to be different. You know, like I've like even this, this, this off season, I still have a free meal in my, my macros every, every week and I haven't taken it for the last three weeks because I don't need it. You know what I mean? So, you know, you start, you, and again, I communicate that with Jamie too. And I tell her, I'm like, I didn't take a free meal this week, you know, just so you know, um, you know, cause those, those things will, will manifest in your goals as well too. You'll see it in your weight, your inflammation, your whatever, those kinds of things too, if you're eating way off, of, you know, processed foods, whatever it might be. But again, it's a mental, it's a mental cue with whatever, whatever's going to work for you in, the, in the, that time frame. And that's also why I feel like if you have a good coach that you can communicate with and things like that, stick with that person. <laughs> 
be able to change those things, knowing what you've done in the past, you know, knowing what has worked in the past for you, what has not, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah and I have clients fun. like you that, you know, they'll come to me and they're like, Hey, I have the untracked meal in my plan each week, but I don't really need it. And I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. great. So if you're not going to take an untracked meal, let's just go ahead and raise your macros every day, yeah. knowing that you're yeah. to plan and then you have a little bit more food. Right. So that's yeah. where, again, that communication is key and every client's different. Some need that untracked meal every week. Some people don't really care for it and they just want to yeah. kind of take it for special events and things like that. Nothing is right or wrong. It's just about adjusting the plan to make it right for you. That's right. Um, I don't know if I showed this one already. Let me see. I thought I X'd out. Let me pull up the ones I've got here and see what we got left here. Here's this one. Okay, here's one that's um, she's competing. So this one's one that's actually in prep. So let's do that one. Okay. Okay. Here we go. So she's on 100 gra- 170 grams of carbs, 120 grams of protein, 30 grams of fat. She's in prep. She's 110 pounds. Um, she's five foot three. Uh, she's 29 and she's competing in bikini in five and a half weeks. So how does this look for you as far as somebody who is five and a half weeks out? Well, I'm 5'3", and my stage weight is about 116 to 118, depending on how uh, flat or full I am. Mm -hmm. Um, So I would say she's probably pretty darn close, and her macros are still pretty high. I mean, 170 Mm -hmm. grams of carbs being five and a half weeks out, you still have plenty to pull from. Fats are 30. Uh, It's on the lower side, but... You, you, I, I sometimes have to get my, uh, my fats and clients fats down to 20 if we have to. Right. So she still has plenty of room to pull from if she's still needing to get leaner. Um, I think she's, I think she's in a, a great spot with this, with this, um, uh, current yeah. stats and macro split. Yeah, I would agree. And also, you know, just to touch on something you just mentioned, you know, she's true novice you're a pro so there's a big difference there absolutely <laughs> so you absolutely. know those those six pounds make a big difference from from one level to another so you know i would say yeah i would say she's probably right on right here um exactly I, I i again i don't think there's anything wrong with the 30 grams of fat at five and a half weeks out um i probably below that if you do maybe do it for a week or two and that's it and you know go back up over that 30 mark but other than that, I think everything looks good. I, I yeah. you know, I her weight is 9, her protein is 120, so she's going to be holding on to the muscles best she can. She's probably pretty filled out with 170 grams of carbs, you know, those kinds of things. So, you know, I, again, we don't know a lot about her activity level and, you know, what she's doing for cardio and training. But when it comes to her specific size, this looks, this looks fun. This looks pretty good. Right. Right. Yep. So. Can't see photos, like I said. So, like, it, it just depends on what she looks like at mm-hmm. the moment. If she's close to being stage lean, this, that was great prep for her. Like, she was able yep. to keep her food nice and high. She still has five and a half weeks. So, she needs to get, you know, two to three more pounds off. I couldn't imagine it could be more than that. Um, mm-hmm. she's, she's got plenty of room to pull from food-wise. I don't know how much cardio she's doing right now. But there there are changes she could make to get a little bit leaner. Absolutely. And hopefully. And she, again, five and a half weeks out, hopefully she could be ready a little bit ahead of schedule and then start bringing food back up to start filling back out that process again. Yeah. So, and again, going back to, we don't know all the specifics, but from what we can see here, this looks pretty good. So absolutely. Uh, good job. Good job. <laughs> good job. <laughs> Let's see. We got a couple more here. Uh, we talked about that one already. Oh, this is another one I wanted to pull up because it's got the refeed in there. Okay, so 200 grams of carbs, 75 grams of fat, 170 grams of protein, two refeed or cheat meals per, I'm assuming that means per week. Um, she's 5'8", 158.2 pounds, 35 years old, putting on more muscle. Um, again, this looks really good to me. Um, high, the fats are high. The fats Very are high. high. Yeah, yeah. Fat, fats are about 50% of body weight right now. Yeah. Um, I, I, for me, that would be, that would be too high. Yeah. <laughs> Um, just, I, I have a hard, I have the hardest time with, with actually consuming fats to be perfectly honest with you. Like that's the hardest one for me when it comes to getting into my, into my food. Because I just, in general, I just use, I guess, lower fat, um, like meats and things like that. And I don't like adding fats. Like I don't like adding oils. I don't like adding nuts. I just don't like, don't like doing it. That's just my own personal, personal thing. But I just pulled up mine right now and I'm looking at it right now. My fats are at 63. And I'm um, at 55. Yeah. And so it's, 
I'm, I'm laughing because we're going to use my 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 fitness pal in a, in a minute but today's my my check-in day so like any point in time Jamie could change it like while we're sitting here so it could end up being different once we pull it up but we'll see um but anyway but yeah and I, again I'm I'm five foot nine um she actually weighs a little bit more than I do at this point um by a few pounds um but her goal is to put on muscle which is is fine that's my goal too um and carbs are at 265. So, you know, for me, and again, this is, this is, this is what would work better for me. If she was to take some of those, those grams of fat, put them into her carbs, I feel like that might be a little bit better. Um, that's just me personally, because I feel like that the, the fats are high, you know? The, yeah. The conversation that, or the piece we don't know is perhaps she might be a hard gainer. Right. So mm -hmm. if she's most of the time I see this with my what I, what I call my giraffe athletes. So the five, eight, and the five, nine, <laughs> yeah. sometimes when you're giving them more and more and more and more and more carbs and you're kind of, you know, you're in this reverse phase, they're just blowing through the food. And yes. And for whatever reason, you have to bring the fats up just to kind of slow that process down. That's most mm. of the time when I have clients that are at this fat range, which which I do. I have one mm -hmm. that's close to 100 grams of fat because if I bring her carbs up, her body, her metabolism just starts picking up. And then the only way that I can get her to stop dropping weight in a reverse and a growing phase is to keep the fats up nice and high. Um, yeah. Other than that, though, yeah, th this would be too much fats for me. So again, there's there's things we need to know. Um, she's yes. she is saying I'm putting on more muscle, so I'm going to assume yep. it's working for her. Um, mm -hmm. She's probably in a really deep off season. You know, she's she's eating very well. Um, you know, she's yeah. 200 grams of carbs. I would say that's maybe a little bit low with the fat content, but again, she's she's. It sounds like she's doing good. She's also getting two refeeds. Two refeeds. Or per yes. week so then you have to think that she's on top of that maybe another at least 2,000 to 3,000 calories you know depending on what she's right. eating on those refeed so she's eating very very well um hopefully she's growing you know like I said yeah. based on that comment she is um but everybody's you know a little bit different here that's why those that's why the fats could be that high well and, go, and going to your to your point there too I mean maybe one of the reasons why she has the cheat meals is because she blows through her food that could be yeah. that could be why she's got the cheat meals planned in so Absolutely. again, we don't, we don't know, but that could be a very good reason why, you know, um, if somebody's just, if somebody's just burning, 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 you got to slow them down somehow, you know? Exactly. So, um, yeah, I mean, as far as that's concerned, the, the only thing, like I said, personally, I would put the, put the fats down, carbs up, but if it's working for her and she's actually uh, putting on size, then I don't see a problem with it. And like you said, it might be just the, the giraffe athlete syndrome. That's going to be, that's going to be our new, <laughs> our new catchphrase. My, my giraffe. little giraffes. <laughs> giraffe. So that, that, that's good. I like that. We've, we've coined a new phrase here. Um, on the <laughs> it is the giraffe athlete the giraffes. syndrome. Yes. <laughs> the giraffe yes. athlete syndrome. We're always going to come up with new stuff for, for the, for our, our fans. <laughs> They're gonna start exactly. pointing and turning it and tagging. But <laughs> we it. heard it. We heard it all behind the bikini. I have the giraffe athlete syndrome. <laughs> you could say so, you're a giraffe. <laughs> that's right. No, I am. I hundred percent agree with that. I, I mean, I burn through food pretty well too. And, and I, you know, all the time, the one, there's there's and minuses to being a giraffe, right? The plus is is that you can put ten pounds on and people don't even know. Like you, where where you know what I mean? Like you just have such a long surface area. Sorry. That? Literally my watch <laughs> literally my watch is going insane. I've been trying to shut it off for 10 minutes. I don't know what it's doing. <laughs> it's like I have something to say is what it's doing. Um but yeah, I so <laughs> So, you know, we can, we can put the 10 pounds on and it doesn't even look like we put any weight on. And that's also a detriment, right? Because Absolutely. Much, you know, as much weight as we put on, we still don't look like we put on weight, you know, like it, my constant feedback is always grow, 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 Just grow, grow, <laughs> except for my upper body. No, not my upper body. But, um, but that's, that's, that's the, that's the issue. So, um, okay. So the next thing we're doing on this topic is we're going to build. Hold on a topic. second. Now the cops are calling me back. <laughs> we'll cut this. We'll edit. <laughs> nope. Okay. They hung up. <laughs> God. Um, is getting, getting bikini. Hello. Okay, we're back. <laughs> we good? You're not getting arrested? They literally keep calling me now. 
Oh my God. Police received a 911 call from this phone number. If you need emergency services, please press one to be connected to an operator. Please don't call me back. <laughs> See, this is this is where you need the work mode for your exactly. phone. Right exactly. Right there. That's it. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a first. We've got so we've got the. They heard us talk about the giraffe syndrome, and now they're sending an emergency vehicle. They thought it was ne never a dull moment. Never a dull moment with me. <laughs> me and technology do not get along. <laughs> Oh, I have my I have my own fair share of those things too. I was getting mad at the the replay from the Arnold because um, it was fine when I went live in because I did my commentary. I went live on my commentary at the Arnold um, in pre judging. It was fine for those that were on live, but then when it reposted, my audio was synced behind my visual, so people thought the audio wasn't working. It's like no, it's actually you just have to listen a couple extra seconds and it's there. But it was just the it was the replay. Like the live Damn. was fine. That yeah. sucks. Y'all just got to be on with me during live because that's it. That's it. <laughs> it was fine when it was live. So, um, you so do anyway, live so commentary for Arnold UK. I am. It's I just in the morning. It's going to be 3 a.m. my time. I'm going to do it. I might, and I say this with a caveat, I might have a special guest with me doing it. So we'll see. Fine. Try to, try to coordinate. We'll see. Um, but yes, I'm definitely going to do it regardless. I'm going to do it for pre-judging, at least pre-judging on Saturday. If I can get my special guest on, then it'll be um, pre on Friday, too, and then finals on Saturday. Fun. <laughs> I will Fun not time. be waking up at 3 in the morning, but I will go back and watch. Watch the live <laughs> the live replay. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so about a meal. So we're just going to do this really quickly to show you how it can work on my fitness pal. Um, I've got mine up right here, so let me pull it up. Um, just to give you guys an idea, um, this is where my intake is right here. So you can take a look at the front page on here. This is my caloric intake. This is my carbs, fats, protein. I very rarely from, I use this for the desktop version for my clients, but I very rarely use it for myself. So, um, we'll go over to food. Now, everybody likes to program their foods a little bit differently based on, you know, based on their workouts, their training, um, you know, all those kinds of things. We're not going to get into the minutia of that because, again, it's very person dependent. Um, but I will say for myself, I eat the exact same breakfast every single day. And my breakfast is my favorite meal. It's my biggest meal of the day. I'm into it. And that's just how I like to do it. So um, I'm just going to show you kind of how I put my breakfast together. Um, so again, we, we, we've kind of broken this down to meals too. So when you first initially get my fitness pal, it's going to say breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks. That's just how most people eat. Us in the bodybuilding world, we don't eat like that. <laughs> we, we, we eat with meals versus breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You guys know that. So you can change that in your settings and everything that, like that too. Again, we're not going to go into the minutia of this, but you can change that. Um, then... Because I eat the same meal for meal one all the time, you can actually create a meal and just put it in, and that's your meal one or meal two. You can create meals, things like that. Um, for today's purposes, I'm just going to add the foods. So I'm going to go in here. And you'll notice right here are most things that I use for the basis. These are a lot of the, the foods that I actually eat daily or weekly or whatever. They're, they're already there. My breakfast every single morning is what you see here at the top. Okay, so it's my yogurt. We're gonna add it. So I do a, a um, serving of Greek yogurt every single day. Um, helps my stuff. I do off season and prep all the time. Um, I do banana, and yes, I weigh my bananas. So you can, if you're doing fruit, you need to weigh it. Um, 97 grams is about a mini, a medium banana, but weigh it because it's going to, it's going to vary. It's not super hypercritical when you're in the off season, I would say, but it is when you're definitely in prep, especially when you're talking about sugar and carbs and things like that. So peel the banana and weigh it. Um, yeah, it's still shocking to me how many people log one medium banana and like, yeah. what does that mean? That's relative, right? Like <laughs> yes. you have to weigh it, the, the mm -hmm. parts that you're eating without the peel. 
Yes. <laughs> right. Take um, the peel off. That, that's a, that's it, a good point. Take the peel off. <laughs> yeah. And it's, and it's funny you just said too about tracking fruit. I literally just did a consult last week and the girl, um, her current coach who is a small time coach is said, oh, there's no reason to track fruit. And I said, well, what kind of fruit are you eating? A, a banana. And I'm like, you know, like in 50 grams of banana, that's like 25 to 30 grams of carbs that you're just not tracking three times a day. Like, yeah. So banana, it, yes, you do, you do have to track anything carbs. with calories. 22 grams of carbs right there. <laughs> yeah. 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 You so. need, you need to be tracking. You need to be tracking. So, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and fruit is good. You just don't want to do it in, in excess. Um, fruit is great for like fiber and things like that. Digestion, all of that too. I always have some fruit, fruit in my diet every day. So I usually eat fruit once a day and I'll have something. It's a banana or blueberries or something. I've been on a ban yep. banana kick for a long time. So banana is my thing. Bananas are just easy. They're, they're easy to I weigh. They're easy to, they're easy to take with you no matter where you go. So bananas are my thing. Um, yeah. Uh, I like to then, pee with bananas. Yeah. Yeah. The and then chicken. Helps. So this morning I had, so again, I go back to, you know, whatever, it's somewhere between four to six ounces of, of protein. I had five ounces of chicken this morning. So that's my chicken right there. And that's my breakfast. So there you go. That's, that's my full meal right there. So you can see everything that's been listed here. It adds up everything. It's a big breakfast. It's 700 calories almost, you know? Yep. Yep. Um, but it's, it's, as you can see, as I said before, we were talking about these macros. The hardest thing for me is getting the fats in. Um, my fats typically come into play towards the, the end of the night it keeps me satiated like going into bed and things like that too um I, I, that's just the way i am you know some people don't do it that way i do it that way my my mornings start off with a pretty heavy carb and protein meal every day yeah. um i like fats in the first and the last meal of the night the fats yeah. kind of help me stay a little bit more full during the day give my body something to start metabolizing mm -hmm first meal of the day. And I like uh, protein and fat in my last meal of the night. So I feel nice and full going to bed. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's, I put, I would say the majority of my fat goes into probably my last meal. Now yeah. that's going to change once I go into prep because you don't have as much fat to, to work with. But like I said before, for me, having over 60 grams of fat is a lot for me. Yeah. So, and I try, and again, I try to put it into like, I, I eat red meat. So some people don't eat red meat, but I eat red meat pretty much every day. I have steak yeah, or, me or, too. or something like that every day. Me too. Um, I'm anemic too. So that's helpful with that as well. So all the iron levels and things like that. So again, going back to what's going to be specific for you may not be this, the, what's specific for somebody else, but that's just what, what works for me. So yeah. that's my, that's my typical morning breakfast every single day, you know, and again, yeah. some little things will change. Like I'll have an extra ounce of chicken or you know, the banana might be a little bit bigger or I do a different bagel versus the, the cinnamon raisin one or whatever it is, but that's essentially what I eat every day. Yeah. And as a bodybuilder too, like, I know, like if you're looking at this for the first time, you're like, wow, this like looks like a lot. There's a lot of math. The more you do it, the more you understand the macros right. and it becomes very easy. Um, and it's a really great way to actually see what's in your food. You know, a lot of the times we tell this story to ourselves that a food's not that bad or it doesn't have that many calories. And until you really start tracking it and you're like, oh, wow, like this is a snack that I love and this is 50% of my carb for the day. Like, do I really want to continue yeah. eating this? Um, yep. Something else is that that's really great too. Obviously we're looking at the desktop version, but on the phone version, there is a barcode scanner as well. So when you're getting yes. started, that's a really great way just to kind of zap your meals and get them into the MyFitnessPal and start playing around with the serving sizes and whatnot. And as a bodybuilder, typically we're type A and we kind of find our routine and do the same thing. So if you notice underneath each meal, there's the the things add food and then the quick tools. So if Sean mm -hmm. wanted to copy the meal two that she had yesterday in her My Fitness Pal, she could simply just click the quick tools option. And then there's a copy from date feature. Mm -hmm. And then she can literally just pick the date that she wants to copy that last meal to and pull it into today's My Fitness Pal. Um, mm -hmm. So like me, I pretty much eat the same every day even though I eat the same meals every day I still track every day because Jamie goes into my fitness pal each time that she does a check-in with me and she assumes what's in my fitness pal is what I ate um so yep. I just copy and paste copy and paste copy and paste copy and paste all my meals it's one of my it's part of my morning routine the same thing I do every morning um and then if I want to change out something here and there because I'm having a untracked meal that night then I will um or if I want sweet potatoes one night instead of rice whatever the case may be then I make those simple adjustments and move on with my day so the more you do it, the more my fitness pal starts learning your habits, like you just saw, 
you know, she just went in to go log ha the, her habits and literally the first five things on there was what she does every day. So my yep. fitness pal starts suggesting the, those meals to you because it's starting to learn that that's what you typically pick. Right. Um, and it also tracks the majority of the things that you have added to meal one uh -huh. in the past. So the more you use it, the better and better that it becomes for you and becomes more custom to you and your, your habits. Yes. And this also goes back to the, okay, as if we are doing macros, so you can pick what you want to eat, put in here, but it really is a meal plan at the end of the day too, right? If you're just copying the same meal over and over and over again, that's what a meal plan is. You know what I mean? Like that's essentially what it is. And like you said, you can swap out things when you want to swap it out. And that when you start thinking about it in terms like that, like it, it, it takes something that looks like really difficult to manage down to it's really we're just putting the same meals in every day and we're Correct. swapping something out if we want to you know what i mean it makes it a lot easier your brain doesn't have to think about it as much yes at first it's very overwhelming to try to think to do all this kind of stuff but once you get into the habit of it it's not that hard anymore right correct and then you start realizing oh i have control over this and it becomes easier because you have control over changing it if you want to change it you know what i mean yeah. so it's actually very very freeing to do it that way um yeah now, something else to note, too, when you look at my meal one here, if you were to go to the grocery store and buy this stuff, where would you go to buy all this stuff? Do you want me to answer? Yeah. <laughs> where would you go to buy all this stuff at the grocery store? Everything except for the bagels would be on the outside perimeter of the grocery yeah. store. Actually, the bagels are, too, at my grocery store. <laughs> so all the breads, the bakery, all that kind of stuff is on the outside okay. perimeter. So, yeah, yeah, they're all on the outside perimeter of the grocery store. For people that are just starting out, trying to figure out, okay, what's a good food and what's a bad food, you know, they, we don't, I'm doing those in quotes because there's no such thing as bad food. But if you're trying to get more whole foods, more healthy foods, more nutrition-dense foods, go on the outside of the grocery store versus the inside. When you go to the inside, you're looking at the shelves and, and boxes and cans and things like that, stuff that has a long shelf life versus everything on the outside is going to be your fruits, your vegetables, your, your bakery items, your, um, your, like your yogurts and things like that, your dairy, all those kinds of things, your eggs, all of those things are on the outside of your grocery store. So that's the first place to start. If you're eating everything that, that can sit on your shelf for years and you can still eat it, then you're, you're not eating nutrient dense foods. You're, yep. just, you're not, you're eating stuff with a lot of sodium, a lot of preservatives. Mm -hmm. The other thing I tell people is like, if you're, if you're still questioning it, look at the nutri nutrition label. If the nutrition label has more than three ingredients on it, put it back. You know, yeah. Yeah. If it's got three ingredients or less, go for it. Right. Yeah. And that's not to say that you can't have those fun foods. That's not what I'm saying. But you want your your base of your um, all of your macros to be based on those whole foods, to be based on those things that are perishable, you know, that, that don't have preservatives, that don't have a ton of sodium. Yep. That's what I see the most. The biggest thing, biggest adjustment I have to make on most of my clients is the sodium because of the preservatives and the, the processed foods. Yeah. So, you yeah. Know, and everything in moderation, like always, you know? Mm -hmm. Yep. So give me an idea for what, what one of your meals would be. I'll stick it in for meal two. Oh, I'm boring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Uh, boring is good. We want to show that part of it too. <laughs> mega fit meals, chicken, four ounces. Oh, so it's the same thing I got right here. So on this we'll do four. Yep. And note the over here too. See how it says ounce? So you want to make sure that you've got the right uh, measurement over here too. Someone will give you everything. It'll give you grams, it'll give you ounces, give you whatever. Um, make sure that you've got something you can weigh. Yeah. 200 grams of cooked jasmine rice. So you weigh, do you weigh it cooked right here? I weigh it cooked. Yep. And see, we've got, you said grams, so let's go to grams here. And she said 200. 200, yeah. There we go. So there's 200 grams. So there's uh, the grams. I track salt, so I would do a quarter teaspoon of Himalayan sea salt. I only track salt when I get in season, so I'll be honest. I pay attention to the sodium, but I only track it when I, <laughs> so it's not even here. I don't even know how to spell that. You can just salt. You could just do that. Himalayan. <laughs> Sounding it out. <laughs> I know. I always have to copy and paste that. There you go. Right and top. how much salt? Quarter Say teaspoon. it again. Quarter. Quarter teaspoon. Okay. 
And then I do my uh, truff hot sauce. Oh, I like five that sauce. grams. Okay, is it? Just do truff hot sauce. Yep. Hot sauce, white truffle, uh, black truffle infused hot sauce. That one, five grams. And I weigh everything in grams or ounces. I do not do tablespoons. I do not do teaspoons. I do not do cups because I don't Same. feel like they're that accurate. Same. Um, and I would say also uh, the reason why I asked about the if you weigh your rice cooked or if you weigh it dry, um, because most people, I, I say weigh it dry. Whenever you're doing a rice or an oats or something like that where you're adding water content to it, um, that can skew the weight. So um, if you cook it the same... The, th the key is here is consistency. If you get the, cook it the same all the time, then it's going to be the same all the time. Right. Regardless. Exactly. You know, so that's fine. But, you know, especially when somebody's first starting out and they don't really have the consistency part of it down, make sure that you're doing it when it's dry and then and then uh, weighing it at that point. So that way you're just having the same thing all the time because... You know, I, somebody asked me yesterday if they could do popcorn. And I said no, <laughs> because I said because there's just so much inconsistency when it comes to popcorn. Once, once you get the single this, servings, right? I was like, you know, once you've been doing this for a little while, and, and you know, this particular person, we're trying to get her consistent and everything. Once you've been doing this a little while, you get the tracking down, and we're consistent on all your measurements. Then we can start going into stuff like that, where it's a little bit harder to track it sometimes. You know, that's um, right. Because people always, people always do popcorn wrong. I know I did it wrong myself. So <laughs> like, I'm not a popcorn girl, so I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> I like popcorn, but again, I only do it um, if I don't have to track it. So that that comes into play on a like an upbringing meal or untracked meal, something like that, um, or. If I have, you know, a few extra carbs and fat at the end of the night, I can get one of those little skinny girl pop bags, the little individual bags. I will exactly. Do that, you yeah. know, but it's rare because just because I know that I've tracked it wrong so many times and it just confuses my brain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I just don't do it. Yeah. So, okay. So here's one of your meals. Is this a typical, like, so this is a typical what meal for you? When is, when do you actually eat this? This is my post-workout meal. So it should be about 60 grams of carbs, about five fat and about 35 protein. Perfect. And that's something too. I mean, going into more minutia of this, um, post-workout meals should have relatively low fat, trace fats, that kind of yep. thing. So, you know, as you can see here, the only fat that you're getting from that is from your chicken. Chicken. Yep. So, you know, again, trace fats, things that are not going to be, uh, cause again, fat will slow things down. And yep. when you're post-workout, you want it to go straight into your muscle and, and blood, uh, bloodstream and all that kind of stuff. So don't do the fat after you work out. But we talked about that last week too, where you could do fat ahead of time if you're like a marathon runner or something mm -hmm. like that. Yep. <laughs> That's so, it. So you can see here, I mean, these are two very different examples of meals, but they're both very valid. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's a matter of what works for you. And this is why it's going to be, you know, very person dependent. Um, and it's what you figure out over time. This was not my breakfast every day for a very long time. It is now, even when I get into prep, what happens when I get into prep is I start pulling down some of those quantities. Like instead of having five or six ounces of chicken, it'll be three, you know, um, instead of having a full bagel, I'll have a half, you know, those kinds of things. So it still is my meal one all the time. It's just the, 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 the actual amounts vary based on where I am in my, in my process, whether I'm off season or in season. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I'm a little bit different. I, when I start prep, I do two protein sources, two carb sources, two fat sources. I'm just a lot more restrictive on myself because that's just the way my body responds. Um, so once we go into prep, it's usually chicken, rice, um, oats, and fruit. That's, and, and I just take my, my, uh, fat sources from nut butter or, um, all, uh, not olive oil, sorry, coconut oil. Uh, mm. so, most of the time, that's where my food sources come from. But once I switch that gear and prep, it's I just keep it very, very simple, very consistent. Most meals all look the same, just different quantities based on where I'm at in my season. Yep. So that takes care of building a meal. So that's yep. kind of what we wanted to go over to, today with macros. Anything else you wanted to say before we go into a few questions before to wrap it up? Nope. I think we covered cool. it all. Awesome. Um, so for those of you that are listening and watching, go ahead and comment, let us know what you think. Um, you know, if you have any questions about these macro splits and building and all that kind of stuff too, uh, feel free to type those in the, in the comments below. So to finish out for today, 
let's talk about a couple of questions that we got in from our listeners. So this one, I think we could touch on pretty, pretty significantly because you have to deal with this and everything uh, quite a bit for yourself. So can we talk about ghost periods or regaining cycle tips? So I see this all, this has like become almost like a buzz topic on, on social media. Like I'm seeing it on Facebook groups all the time. I just commented on one the other day where, you know, this girl was like, people are, are wanting to lose their period going into prep. And I was like, I don't think anybody ever wants to lose their period. <laughs> I was like, I don't think that's a thing. I said, it, it, it can be a side effect. I said, but it's not, it's not something that we strive for, you know, um, I, I use myself as an example again. I mean, I didn't lose my period all this whole last year and I was the leanest I've ever been in my life. And I've never, I mean, I've never, I've only lost my period once ever in 15 years. And that was um, due to a really bad prep, you know? Um, but that's not an indicator of if you're healthier, if you're not, it's just something that happens sometimes and we don't really know why. So um, tell me a little bit about you, you, cause you deal with ghost periods and you know, what are some things that you're doing in order to try to regain your cycle back to a normal, a normal level too? Yeah. And I mean, I think every athlete's different here, but I would say the majority do lose their cycle um, when they are, you know, stage lean They're, you know, it's, it's very, very hard as a female to keep your cycle when you're that lean and when fats are on the lower side. So if you're able to keep your cycle like Sean does through the season, that's, that's, that's tremendous. It's huge. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of things affect that as well. Um, mm -hmm. it, you know, you know, being lean, peds can affect that, uh, where your food's at can affect that, stress can affect it. And we have to also think that, you know, working out and training is, is a form of stress as well. And usually when we're getting into steps of prep, cardio is super high, training intensity is super high, and, and food is super low. Um, so number one is, you know, six to eight weeks post-show, get lab work done. How bad is it? You know, if you, if you did lose your period, how bad is it and what needs to be to be fixed. A lot of the times just pulling back on intensity. So pulling back on training and re getting food up and time. That's, that's what the body needs. Um, it just needs to kind of have that reset, get some body fat back on and get into more of a, a balance, a homeostasis. Um, most girls can get their period back that way just fine. Uh, some need to add in some supplements, some like natural supplements, just to try to get natural natural levels back up. I have my own post, what we call post-cycle therapy um, with some new ethics products. And um, that that is the time where I start bringing fats up a little bit higher than I would like it to be normally for a short period of time when we get the period back for you no know, two to three cycles in a row and we know that we're in a good spot, then I'll pull those fats back down to more of that, you know, normal or, or appropriate level. Um, for me, mine is just really complicated just because, you know, I lost my cycle, my very, very first prep, and I liked not having my cycle because I just didn't want it. I didn't want the symptoms. I didn't want to deal with it. I was wrong. I was uneducated mm -hmm. at the time. Um, because of that, you know, you have to think it's, you know, when you get your menstrual cycle as a woman, it is the sign, it is a sign of health. Um, yes. But there's also things that are affected when you do not get your menstrual cycle. Number one for females is bone density. Um, my bones density is is a problem. Um, it's, it's, it's improving slowly over time. I get DEXA scans once a year to, to check on that. Um, but because I spent two years when I first started and not, you know, trying to get a cycle back, my, my body is recovering from that. Um, mm -hmm. and then of course I've been prepping a lot since then as well. And, and when I get stage lean, I don't have a period. My number is 135. Once I drop under one, 135 pounds, I, do, I lose my period. Um, so it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's different person to person. Some people have to do the all natural route. Some people need to get on some form of synthetic hormones in order to help get the period back. Um, seed cycling, seed cycling is a really cool uh, concept. If you're not familiar, you could, that's an easy Google search. You can look that up. It's positioning four types of seeds, uh, based on your, what you think your menstrual cycle phases are and pushing those seeds at that time. And the, the fats and the nutrients and the micro minerals in those seeds help, help, um, restore your natural production as well. Um, but if it's an issue and if it's something that you're experiencing, it's serious and take mm -hmm. a look at it. It's not, not that you're, you know, in danger, but it is something that you don't want to be like, Oh, cool. I don't have my cycle. This is great. It's, it right. is something you want to hyper-focus on. It's the number one thing, you know, after a show, if my girls are going into off season, we're getting on a call on Sunday and we're talking about what their reverse plan looks like. And if they don't have a cycle, what we're going to start doing and what the plan is and timeline is in order to try to get that cycle back. 
Yep. Well, and the other part of that too, on the flip side of that is just because you have your period doesn't mean that everything is functioning properly as well. So, you know, I use this example too. I still get my blood work done after, after my shows and everything too. And obviously a lot of my markers are off as they usually are for people when you come out of, out of a show prep. So just because you're getting your cycle doesn't mean that you're okay either. You know right. what I mean? So you need to make sure that you're you're attacking it from both ends, you know, um, making sure that your hormones are in, in play, your testosterone, your cortisol, your all those all the things on your blood your blood panel. Because just because again, just because you have your period like I did, I still had markers that were off on my blood work. You know? That's it. And again, going back to like my they were the same markers that I had off last year at this at the time after my my show too. So as long as you're keeping track of those things and you're actively working towards correcting them you're going to be fine. But again, you can't just put your head in the sand and say, oh, I'll be fine when I get my period back or oh, I'll be fine when, you know, whatever you need, you need to actively work and pursue towards it. So um, when you're talking about ghost periods, what does that mean for you? What does a ghost period feel like for you? A ghost period is where you essentially have all of the same signs and symptoms, but you're not getting a bleed. Um, so you'll have PMS, you'll get cranky, you'll start getting breakouts on your skin, you'll feel bloated, you'll feel the irritability, all the same things that you would with a cycle, you just never end up bleeding. Um, I feel like that's more frustrating than anything because you feel like crap and then you're not actually getting that bleed, which is like that mental release, like, okay. Like, oh, that's why. Yeah. Right. Um, and that's, that is, has been frustrating for me in this improvement season I've had ghost periods on a dot every month and no bleed and we're we're working to restore that period but I am starting prep in four weeks so it's like you know it's just what comes first the chicken or the egg right so Mm -hmm. um it's 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 a good sign it means my body's trying to throw that period but we're we're still working on why it's not bleeding yet Mm -hmm. um and that's where I'm working with a professional to help me with that you know that's there's, there's a physician that's involved in helping kind of see what's going on and we made some changes over the last few weeks and I'm I am feeling better Better. So that's a good sign. Um, but again, like when you're someone that's competing a lot, that's where you, like day one of improvement season, it has to be the hyper focus. Um, but that's, that's what the ghost period is. So that's with symptoms. And then for some people, they just have no symptoms, no bleed. And that to me is, is more concerning. So that's right. where you really have to kind of really delve into cycles and where you think you are and things like that and start implementing those strategies ahead. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. All right, cool. Awesome. Do we have time for one more? Question? A quick one. quick one. Okay, this will be a quick one. Okay. So what's considered before doing your first cycle? This is a question that came in. So what would be, what one of the things that I see all the time, and I don't know about you, but I see people like immediately, as soon as they start lifting, they want to go on their first cycle of whatever it might be. So don't do that. <laughs> do not do that. <laughs> so, you know, again, we always come at this kind of thing and say, listen, we're not going to judge you what you decide to do one way or the other. You know, you can, you can be, naturally, you can be not. It's up to you. That is your choice. We've talked about this several times. This is your choice. Okay. So, but if you're going to make the choice of going down this direction and going down this road of, of starting a cycle, you know, what are some things to consider before you do that? Um, well, number one would be training history, right? So you shouldn't be jumping on a cycle right away. Like you just said, you know, I would tap out your natural ability as much as possible with food, diet, training. Um, at that time, when you feel like you have maxed out your natural potential, then the next thing is just to number one, make sure you're healthy enough to start your first cycle. So the first thing is, is lab work, you know, go get, going to get that lab work, checking what your natural levels are, making sure that your body's in a good place, and then adding the appropriate supplementation from there. Um, that's where a good coach is going to come in. Um, Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people go wrong at first because, you know, they have a coach that's not really experienced with peds um, and they're just kind of throwing something at them or, you know, they're treating women like a small man. So they're just putting, you know, women on a cycle that they would as a man, just in smaller amounts. Um, So it's about number one, making sure you're healthy. And then number two, finding the correct coach or advisor in helping you pick the correct peds protocol for you. Um, you know, just like we've said on this podcast time and time again, just because you're adding in a cycle, it will never, ever trump diet and exercise. It's only going to enhance what you're already doing. Um, I think a lot of people just, you know, jump on peds and they're like, okay, now I don't have to train as hard. No, you still have to continue doing what you were doing. And now we're adding it in to help you and supplement what you have already been doing. Um, so just like anything, just do it the smart and the healthy way. And if anything feels off in what you're being told or what you're being prescribed to do by your coach, then 
honor that and, and do your own research. Ultimately, at the end of the day, as an athlete, you are responsible for what you put into your body. Okay. If a coach is advising you something, they are not the one injecting you or stuffing something down your throat. You are. Um, so right. make sure that you are educated and make sure you ask questions. Make sure that you completely understand the compound and how it works in your body. That way mm-hmm. you have an understanding of what it should and should not be doing for you and how you should be feeling on it. And then of course, communicate with your coach. If anything feels off, if you don't feel good, whatever it is, you should be communicating that to your coach. And at that time, they should be taking action and not overlooking your feelings. Mm -hmm. Yep. And just to touch on and wrap up a couple of things that you just said, as you said, getting into somebody who you trust to advise you, that means not the guy that's selling it out of the gym bag in the locker room, because I know a lot of people go that direction. They just take what their boyfriend tells them to take, whatever it might be. Don't do that. Cause again, that's like, they're treating you like a mini man and you also have no idea what you're actually putting into your body. Most of the time. That's right. They yeah. tell you it's one thing and it's completely another thing. And that's where you can really, really screw yourself up. So yeah. you need to take this seriously because I've seen girls who do one cycle of something that they think it is and it's not, and they have, themselves for a very, very long time. So, and to your point, there are testing kits as well. So like if you are buying underground or something like that, there's a website called Roid Test and you find the compound that you're trying to, you know, see if it's, if if it is that compound or not, these are very inexpensive tests. And honestly, if you are doing a peed cycle, like you cannot go the cheap route. Like this is not something that you go the cheap route on. We are in a luxury sport. It's an expensive sport. And this is not something that you cut corners on, um, buy the test, make sure that it is what it is. It's not going to tell you if it's the right dosage. So like, let's say it's 10 milligrams of Anabar that you think you're buying. It's not going to tell you if it's the 10 milligrams, but it will tell you if it's Anabar or Oxyandrolone or not. Yeah, That's what the else. test tells you. Yep. That. And then the other part of it is, is that they're not a magic button. So like you said about the training and aspect, it's just going to enhance what you're already doing. So if you're already a shitty bodybuilder, it's just going to make you a bigger, shittier bodybuilder. <laughs> Basically, it's not It's not a, okay, I'm going to press this button and I'm going to miss, be Miss Bikini Olympia. doesn't work like that. It just doesn't work like that. It's like anything else. It's a supplement. It's a supplement to what you are already doing. So it's just going to get you there faster. So if you're doing it wrong to start with, you're going to just go faster doing it wrong. That's <laughs> so, it. I mean, that's the bottom line. It is not an easy button and it never will be. And if, if anything, if you're not doing things right to start with, it's going to make you worse. So that's right. You know, yeah. so take it, take it with a grain of salt. As far as that's concerned, if that's the direction you want to go down, you need to take the, take the proper steps to get there. That's so, it. Yeah. Perfect way to end that. <laughs> so um, we'll, yes, yeah, so we'll wrap this up for today. Um, I know we both have very busy Thursdays ahead of us. So I'll get this wrapped up and put out onto YouTube as soon as possible. And then we'll be back again for next week. As always, you guys, Ask us questions. That's what the comment box is for below. You can shoot it to us in our DMs as well. We do read everything. As you can see, we're sharing a bunch of the stuff that y'all have been sending in. So uh, feel free to do that. We really appreciate all the support. And again, like, subscribe, comment, all of the fun things. Send us to all of your friends who are considering competing. And uh, (laughs) we'll be happy to to help them along the way. And uh, that's it. Anything else you want to add? No, I hope you guys have a good week and we'll see you next week. We'll see you guys next week for episode 30. This is episode 29. We're out.